What we have here is a 1974 Dodge D100. And it's not just any truck. This is one that I really care about and I call it the Mopar Muscle Truck. I've had it for about 10 years after picking it up out of a junkyard for about 900 bucks. I've been falling in love with this thing ever since and making it better and better. You've probably seen this truck in a previous episode or two of Roadkill Garage. We ended up stabbing in a 500 horsepower 360 small block with a four speed and I thought that was gonna be it for this truck. Everything seemed great until I was towing David's Crusher Camaro to the drag strip and I developed a pinhole in the cylinder wall, making that engine a dead player. So what did I do? I had a 318 that was a dyno engine and I stuffed that in really quickly. The little 318 managed to do spectacular burnouts until it blew a ring land, smashed into the cylinder head and cocked the piston over and cracked the cylinder wall. So that thing was done. So where does that take us? I have a 5.7 Hemi that I've had around forever. I got it from Chrysler and used it for a whole bunch of dyno testing. And I wanna build a 392 stroker out of it and back it up with a six speed manual transmission. Hopefully I'll make the ultimate Mopar muscle truck. On this episode, I plan to start building the 392 and I've got Wiley and Birdsong coming by to help. I've already run into a bunch of trouble getting parts because there's some supply problems going on right now and we may not finish it this time. But that's okay because I bought a 74 Charger from Birdsong and he's bringing that with him. You got it out? It's sitting there dripping in the pan. All right, let's get the uh, engine hoist. Pump it up. Thank you. Let's get this thing out of here. Lowering crane. Going on down. All right, pump it up. All right, you tell me when. We got that transmission jack under there, too. Looks like you boys have got it. Ugh, Wiley. Dude, motor is out. Dude, you and I, one. <laughs> Dulcich, zero. Thanks, guys. The guys did a great job pulling the engine and trans, so that means it's cleared out and ready to get the 5.7 Hemi, which happens to be all around me in pieces. Now, one of the problems I ran into with this particular crank is that it had four bolt mounting for the reluctor wheel. That was a later modification on the Gen 3 Hemi. The earliest engines had three bolt reluctor wheels which I happen to have on this particular engine. So one of my jobs was to find a wheel with same tooth count as the original, but with four bolt mounting provisions. And you have to make sure to get high performance racing style bearings that are narrower because these crankshafts have large fillet radiuses in the corner. And if you use regular passenger car bearings, a lot of times you'll get oil starvation in the rods and even the main bearings. So high performance bearings all the way around. Now the stroke of crank may or may not fit the block. I'm gonna have to mock it up in place in the block, put a rod and piston assembly in there and uh, see if it hits anywhere. If it does, I'm gonna have to do a little grinding on the block for stroker clearance. Well, that doesn't hit. The only one that looks like it might be close is right here where there's a bump for the oil passage. So I'm gonna check that one. Okay, it looks like I've got plenty of clearance for the long stroke crank. Now I can go on to assembling the rods, pistons, and rings in preparation for getting all that stuff in the block. Steve's inside getting the 5.7 short block put together. Me and Birdsong already pulled the motor and trans out of the truck. We figured we'd get a bigger head start on him by grabbing the other 5.7 Hemi and transmission out of the back shop here, mating them together, and just dropping it in the truck to make sure everything fits. You're good. There she be. Oh, I think I see a problem. Oh yeah? This is a three bolt. I think Steve ordered a six bolt. So just have to double check that when we get up there. All right, hopefully. Oh, this thing's heavy. He probably looked at it, right? It's Steve. Yeah. Sweet. Beep, 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 beep. 
the close indicator when you're getting too close to hit something. Oh, OK, yeah. yeah. It's a proximity sensor. Yeah, that's it. Man, this thing's high tech, Steve. All right. It's a little smoother over there. We're going straight on. All right. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bird song. Give me a hand with this thing. Holy crap. Hercules. Let's put it straight down. Yeah. I didn't know you were going to Hercules the thing in here. Well, I, you wouldn't know where to be found. I was over here working. No, I'm just kidding. You got it? Yep. All right, you're clear on this side. OK. Don't go any closer, though. Sweet. All right, I'll go find the pressure washer. OK. How's that? Good. What I'm doing now is I'm cleaning up the rods. They had some cosmoline for storage while the things were shipped. And I'm just going to clean them off with the cleaning solvent I have right here, give them a little brush, and then let them dry. Oh, yeah. Just the way I like it. Nice, clean, and ready for installation. The truck is literally calling for the six-speed now. So we just need to bolt it to the back of the block and get it ready. Because you know what's better than four gears? Six. Six. That's <laughs> right. All right. All right, so let me know how much you need to go up. Uh, actually, this back needs to come up a little. That's good right there. Right there? I think so. Let's uh, try going in. All right. It lines right up. <laughs> Boom. All right, you know what will really impress me? Hmm. Put this on your shoulders and drop it in. What is this, a Marvel movie? So we've got the mock-up engine pretty much in the engine bay by now. But we're going to try and get the motor mounts to bolt up and see if everything else works. But it's looking pretty good so far. OK. That's in. Are you in? Yeah, go down. And going down. Oh, did it just fall in? Yes, sir. These particular units were development heads at Chrysler by their SRT group. They were going to develop a CNC ported head, and these are what they came up with. I've never flowed them, but I have run them on the dyno, and they make really, really good horsepower. Are they as good as an Eagle or an Apache head? I don't know, but they're going to be good enough for my truck. I've got a little bit of white powdery corrosion inside the combustion chambers. That's just for moisture and sitting around for a couple of years in the dyno shop. So I'm going to use a very, very soft wire brush and just whisk it away like it's not even there. It comes off really easily. The next thing I'm going to do is take the valve springs off and substitute them for these new conical springs that Comp recommended for the high lift cam that's going to go into the engine. And with that, the heads will be ready to bolt on. We have no more parts. No upper control arms? Yep, no shocks, no upper control arms. We're no bushings. We're just kind of stuck. All right, well, want to go see what Steve's up to? Maybe we give him a hand? Might as well. Sweet. How's it going over here, Steve? No, I'm not bad. I mean, I'm happy. Yeah? Yeah. Looks like you're making some progress. Yeah, I know, but the progress has kind of come to a halt because, um... What's oh, missing here? Uh -huh. That is a pretty sweet looking four cylinder, Dulcich. Actually, it looks like a seven cylinder. Yeah, I'm out Stand of parts. Corrected. <laughs> My ring didn't come in. I'm kind of dead in the water. I can't put the head on. I can't put the pants on the motor. I can't put the intake on. It's basically a standstill. Well, don't feel too bad, because we're in the same situation. We don't have all the parts to finish the Mopar muscle truck either. Well, I, I really don't feel that bad, because we have that 74 Charger you brought me, yeah. and uh, <laughs> we can have fun with that, right? Want to go clean that thing up? If it's going to take us cleaning it up to get it on the road, I'm down for it. I vacuumed out about 98% of all the scuzz that was in here. The seats are falling apart, and the headliner is still falling down, and stuff's probably still going to be blowing around in our eyes. But I want to throw some seat covers on the seats just to keep everything contained. I'm going to put a moving blanket over the back seat just to cover the whole thing, make it easy. And that's probably going to be good enough for a test drive. The wheel 
alignment. The speedo perfect. works. Look at that. No. Wow. The brakes and work. And the brakes work. You see, one other thing about the 74 Chargers, they have the isolated front K-frame suspension. And an isolated transmission cross member and an ISO clamp rear suspension. So this is supposed to handle better and ride smoother. What do you think? I'm convinced already. This thing is good. I don't know what kind of shape the shocks are in. But this is not good. Oh my gosh, this thing handles better than the T37. Look at the body roll. Oh my god. Almost non-existent. I think the door handle hit the pavement on this side. I light. heard that. I like the mirror is oh swing. That's a, this is our G-force meter. Was it hit a rolling burnout? Oh, dude, Let's I... see if it'll burn out one whole telephone pole length. Yeah. Oh yeah. You think? And these are decent sized tires too. That's a long way. She might make it. I think you it? just barely made it. I think it made it. What do you think, yeah. Wiley? Well, the view like from back there. close. It's close. Yeah, dude, that's impressive. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Man, it throws you back in your seat.